Windows on the Steam Deck. Now, the word Windows makes a lot of you shudder, especially on something like a Steam Deck, but it does not have to be that bad of an experience. Today, we're going to make a custom installation of Windows using a free tool called NT Lite. We will be able to get rid of almost all of the bloatware that comes from the factory and turn off almost all of the privacy stealing telemetry products that Microsoft has. If you haven't seen my video about Windows on the Steam Deck in 2024, you should click the link in the description and go watch it as soon as you're done with this video because it's kind of like a part two, even though this is a released after. That's kind of like a guide in using Windows in 2024, as the name suggests, and this is just how to make your own custom Windex install. It's gonna have custom drivers and a bunch of other cool features. So make sure to like, subscribe, and we're gonna get right into it. All right, this process is pretty straightforward. So first thing you're gonna do, obviously, is Google NT Lite and go to the download link. One click and you should have it downloaded. You're also going to want to go to Microsoft's website and download the Windows 11 ISO. Don't download the installation media, don't download the media creation tool, don't do any of that. You're going to want to download the disk image ISO because that is what we're going to be editing in today's video. Go here to select download, select Windows 11 multi edition, then download now. It's going to ask you what your product language is Arabic, <laughs> just for simplicity's sake. Verify your download and then click this button right here and your download should be on its way. And remember, all of these links are just going to be down in the description so you can instantly access them instead of having to look them up. So this part is an optional step and it uses a feature that I haven't quite figured out yet, but I am going to include it in the video for the sake of trying to future proof this but basically what you're going to do now is go ahead and pre-download the steam dex drivers onto this computer and the reason why we're going to do this is because there's an optional setting in nt Lite that allows you to preload drivers so that way you don't have to search them up go through the process of installing them on the steam deck on its mini display i'm going to do what i know how to do and if it doesn't work for you please let me know down in the comments i'll do my best to help you but i haven't a hundred percent figured out how it works and of course the next step is pretty obvious all you do is go click on the nt Lite setup and follow the instructions it takes very little time at all and launch NT Lite. We are now into NT Lite. Nobody's got time for buying a license, so just go ahead and put free, limited, non-commercial, and press OK, and you're in the software already. It's really that simple. All right, now that everything's downloaded and set up, all we do is come up here to this little add button, image, scroll down and find your ISO, Windows, double click it, and now you'll have every single version of Windows to edit independently of each other. Personally, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend you use Windows 11 Pro N. And the reason why I go with N is because it's put in other regions of the world where they're not allowed to preload certain features onto the Windows installation, which is good for us because we want to strip away as many features as possible in order to get the best gaming experience possible. So if you want to follow along with me, Windows 11 Pro N, again, double click it. Now, this is where things get a little taxing on your storage, so I should have gave this warning earlier, but it creates an exact copy of it. So it's going to kind of balloon the storage of NT Lite itself. But after you're done, of course, you can just delete the file like usual. Okay, now after some minor technical difficulties, we are actually in the session and this is what it should look like for you. You start at the image and of course you wanna select which one you want and I chose again, Windows 11 Pro N. You're gonna go down to updates and this is where you can actually find updates. So add and then latest online updates and it should give you a list here. And realistically, you don't wanna do any of these for what we're doing specifically. But I am gonna download this cumulative update and the .NET framework here and Click these two little boxes and in queue. That way it'll be done when we click finish. Now head to drivers. Now this is again the optional part. And now if you want to do add your drivers, simply go to the add button in the top left, directory containing drivers, add, and then again, scroll to where you want to look at it. So here, I forgot to extract them. You should do that too. And after unzipping the drivers, coming back to add directory containing drivers, then we can now see this whole directory here has it. So we're just going to select this entire folder and it should go through and automatically find all these packages. Now they're all in the driver queue, which means they should automatically be integrated into the Windows install upon finish here. Now we get into the registry tweaks, which this is something that you really shouldn't do. And we're not doing it for performance reasons. We're actually going to use it to use a touchscreen hack that I detailed in my Windows 11 guide for the Steam Deck. But in order to change the registry in NT Lite, you have to make a cache of this registry on your registry. It's a little bit weird. It is a little bit finicky, but it does work and it shouldn't compromise your system at all. So go up here to edit. It's going to give you this warning that I just said, do not show this in the future. Okay. And it should load you straight into your register. And here you're going to do all of your editing under this NLTMP because anything else is actually the registry. So if you make any changes that are damaging to your system anywhere else, other than under this temporary file, you're kind of screwed. And although I didn't mention it, obviously you're going to go to machine software and edit from there. Then you're going to go down to Microsoft, expand this, come down to touch prediction, edit latency here, decimal value data two. Then you're going to come down to sample time, double click sample time, decimal again, value data two. The reason why we're doing this is because it improves 
touchscreen responsiveness as well as accuracy. And I haven't really experienced Windows without it, but as far as I know, touchscreen works amazing on my Steam Deck and I use this hack, so I recommend it to you. Now, I came down to components here, and this is where we're gonna do the bulk of our editing to the operating system here. And obviously it gives us a warning. This is probably not gonna be stable, especially if it's your first time and you venture a little too far out. But if you follow this guide, hopefully I'll be able to get you a Windows install that works. And if it doesn't, you can just come back and go a little lighter on the edit. And each of these drop down menus have things that you can select. And this is where we get to have a lot of fun because there are so many things here that you just wanna get rid of. You wanna completely nuke and it will make your Windows experience a lot better. Like first thing here, Clipchamp. What is that? Don't know, don't care. Cortana, gone. Feedback Hub, gone. Flipgrid, we can't get rid of that. If anything has a grayed out check mark, you cannot get rid of it. Get help, gone. Mailing calendar, we're, it's a Steam Deck. Why do we need a mailing calendar that we can't just use online? News, people, photos, solitaire, sticky notes, to do, weather, notepad, you should probably keep notepad. Office, gone. Paint, I'll keep it just for fun. Quick assist, don't know what that is. Snipping tool, I'm going to keep that too. Store experience host, definitely get rid of this. I believe this is one of the ones that preloads bloatware onto your device. Tips, gone, calculator, camera, clock. Now, Windows Defender is a little weird. If you get rid of Windows Defender, you are a little more vulnerable, but as long as you're not stupid, and again, this is a gaming machine, so it shouldn't matter, and it shouldn't have too much of your personal data on it, I'm gonna get rid of it for my case here. And then, when you click it, because Windows Defender and Security Center are linked together, if you wanna get rid of that, you have to get rid of this, so all, yes. Windows Maps, gone, don't need that. Web Experience Pack, now this is another one of those bloatware things. Get rid of it immediately. Now, I'm leaving the Xbox Game Bar services. I'm not even really sure if they work, but I'm gonna leave it here because you might want to use Xbox when you are using your Steam Deck for Game Pass, cloud streaming, whatever else. So I'm going to leave that here. It might not work because of the edits we're doing to it, but it also might. Your phone, again, gone. Drivers, I'm not going to get rid of any drivers. None of this really matters. Hardware support, again, another one of those things where it's just not worth editing. I'm not getting rid of anything in the ISO image either. Localization, again, nothing I'm getting rid of. Multimedia, there isn't a lot of things you can change here. Network, again, I wouldn't recommend you do things here. Promoting and privacy, that seems okay. Kernel debugging, that seems okay. That seems okay, but there's no point to have it. Peer networking, we might need that. System apps, again, this is where things get fun. Wouldn't mess with any of this. Call, calling shell. This might stop you from using apps like Discord. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm not gonna include it here by getting rid of it. Desktop app web viewer, another thing we probably need. Eye control, don't need that. File explorer, obviously you're gonna need that. ML, narrator, gone. Make a test. Get rid of that too, because that's a lockdown browser. Windows Hello setup, gone. I don't use Windows Hello, I'm never gonna use it. Windows Feature Experience Pack, I would also recommend get rid of that. Now we're gonna come into the system. There's not a lot you can change here because if you were able to change a lot, you would probably break it. So this is scheduled tasks, this is a premium feature, we can't do anything here. Now we're gonna come down to features. This is where you can select a couple different things. You can do TFPT clients, Telnet clients. None of this we need, but none of this is things that we really do need to uncheck. So I'm just gonna leave this. Settings, now this is where things get really complicated because there's just just so many micro settings that you can change but we're gonna go through each list and just kind of look at them and I'm gonna tell you if there's anything that you 100% need to get rid of these are all logs it's not really that big of a deal crash control I'm also not gonna mess with any of that desktop this is where you can actually pre change your accent colors for some reason for me it didn't work but if you do want to change it come over here to this little drop down and you can actually select any color you want there's icons everywhere classic context menu if you like that you should turn that on zoom just like log on screen I would recommend to turn this off. Painting a test bar, obviously you want that on. Enhanced pointer precision, turn that off. Event viewer. There's not a lot of things here that I would like to change. There's a lot. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm not going to mess with any of them. This is Windows Explorer. Again, not going to mess with it. Network. Again, not going to mess with it. Power control. Fast startup. I'm going to turn this off. Fast startup has been known to cause a lot of issues, especially with something like a Steam Deck. Now, privacy. This is where things get subjective. Again, this is a gaming device. Privacy isn't that big of a deal. But for me, privacy is just always kind of a big deal. And here in the privacy dropdown, you have allow app access. And so you can actually revoke access to appointments, call history, camera, contacts. And I'm just going to do this. If you want to manually let an app use one of these things, you can do that. But from the get-go, you should disable all this. As well as allowing experience improvement program for video drivers. You're not going to be using an video driver but going to turn that off anyways. Allow location services, make sure to disable that completely. Location services, again, off. Telemetry is off. Security disabled. Allow experimentation, also turn that off. Autocorrect misspelled words, I'm turning that one off. Installation of sponsored app, again, this is an important one to turn off. Bloatware, automatically install suggested apps, again, no. Collect contacts to let Windows, Cortana understand you. Disable, disable type text, 
written text, disable Cortana, activity, Cortana, Cortana, get rid of Cortana, I cannot stand that thing. Disable all of these let apps, just get rid of all let windows, let apps, skypes, occasionally social suggestions and start, I'm gonna get rid of that too. Online speech recognition services, turn that one off too. Personalize your speech typing, get rid of that. Pre-installed apps, disabled. OEM apps, disabled. Search history on this device, I'm turning that off. Send Microsoft info about how, nope, get rid of that. Shared experiences, I'm just gonna get rid of that too. Windows welcome experience, no. Disable Edge, Internet Explorer, Smart Screen, get rid of Windows Copilot and Tips. Hard work seller and GPU scheduling, I would recommend you turn that on. Setup requirement, RAM, TP and Secure Boot. Go ahead and get rid of this, this, and this actually. Get rid of all of those three. I'm not sure if it 100% matters, but I I'm pretty sure that you're not going to get away with installing this unless you do get rid of the TPM. I'm not 100% sure. Windows Update. I'm going to leave this on default, but be careful because Windows Updates can be, obviously, as everybody knows, annoying and they can break things, especially when you have a Windows install like this that's highly customized and might not have all the required dependencies. Also, I just went back to settings and looked up telemetry. This is disabled, but we forgot to disable Windows Universal Telemetry Content. Disable that. And disable that so that way all of your telemetry data should be safe now in services none of this really matters we're just going to do a quick search for telemetry telephony turn this off turn that off too and everything else through here should be fine i don't want to drag you guys through this whole list so this will actually allow you to go ahead and skip the windows setup so now one more time i'm going to add another optional step I believe somewhere in the process we went ahead and got rid of Microsoft Edge, which I fully support. But obviously if you get rid of all browsers, including Internet Explorer, and there's no way to do anything at all, how are you supposed to access the internet? Well, this is how. So you're gonna come to your browser of choice. For me, I choose Firefox, obviously. So you come to Firefox, Firefox, Windows 64 bit, not regular, MSI. MSI allows for it to be silently installed. This means it'll automatically be installed for us when we boot up. So that way we don't have to do anything, interact with it. It just comes out of the box with our browser of choice. And while I personally do not use it, I think this is really the only case where you could actually say that something like Opera GX would be of use. But we're gonna come back to NT Lite, click on our post setup, and then do before logon, file, Firefox. NCI and parameters make sure slash passive is here don't know if it matters because it's an MSI anyways but doing slash passive allows you to make sure 100% that you're not going to get soft lock if you get into the operating system without a web browser you're not going to be able to do anything at all here's where things get interesting because you can actually save the image and trim the additions and I recommend you do this that way it cuts down significantly on the file size image formats standable editable editable whim I don't think any of this matters because you're going to make sure 100% that you click create ISO and uh Windex. So label. Now we're going to click process. And this is going to take a little while. It says to disable Windows Defender. I actually do have this disabled. So I'm not sure what it's talking about. If this pops up for you, I would recommend not disabling Windows Defender because it doesn't seem to really do anything at all. But unfortunately, yes, start applying things. Unfortunately, this is not a completely automatic process. You're going to have to sit here and click a couple buttons. To get the complete automatic experience, you have to buy a license, but Realistically, you've only got to click like one or two buttons to not pay for a commercial license. So I think that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. And just let it do its thing here. See, and it says right here, after completing the download, completed download, this message is non-existent when fully licensed. That's completely stupid. They literally just added it. Again, another stupid premium message. And there we are, it's done. And after significant delay, we're done. It took a lot longer to finish the process than I normally remember. It took probably 30 minutes if I had to guess. And at least for the first part, you have to stick around to click the okay buttons, but it wasn't that bad of a setup all in all. There was a lot of settings to look through. And again, if anything is wrong with your Windows installation, just go back, fix anything. I've used these settings before and they've worked pretty well for me, but if you see that I've made any glaring mistakes, or anything happens to you, just let me know in the comments down below because I will address it, I will pin it, I will update it, whatever I need to do. Make sure to click the link in the description to go watch my Windows on the Steam Deck in 2024 guide if you haven't already. And of course, remember to like the video, subscribe for more content, especially if you actually got something out of this video. And have a great day.